Hello again, and today I wanted to talk about something that uh, Canada started in the year 2011, something they had never done before, and they produced these coins which had a $20 face value, and they were made out of 100% silver. In this case, it was a quarter ounce, quarter troy ounce of silver, and you could actually use these uh, at a at a bank, uh, their bank would give you twenty dollars for them. But uh, they were intended more, of course, to be be uh, as a bullion in investment. They are uh, kind of kind of small. They're 20, uh, 27 millimeters in diameter. Uh, that's a little bit smaller, well, a millimeter smaller than the American American quarter. And as a one hundred percent silver, one quarter troy ounce. And 200,000 of these coins were made, struck, that is. Now, I say 200,000 were struck, but only 198,000 were actually sold. And uh, the Royal Canadian Mint, uh, in the last two, last 15 years or so, have had a policy that they will sell particular issues, the, their commemoratives and such, and the, usually they will sell them by a particular date. This one was dated 2011, so presumably they were selling them through the year 2011, and the at the end of the year, any, one, any coins that did not sell were taken back and melted down. This uh, was a was was a practice that the mint, as I say, started only about fifteen years ago. Before that time, if they issued, print, struck a whole lot of coins and not a lot of them sold, they would then turn around and sell them at a deep discount after a certain period of time. This upset a lot of dealers and collectors who had bought, paid full price for them when they first came out, only to see the value of their item being undermined by by it being sold off in bulk a year later. So the Mint stopped that practice and now if you don't buy it and the, the Mint has the Mint has some left over in their warehouse they set a deadline and after that deadline they're melted down. In this case then only 2,000 of these were melted down and 198,000 of them are still out there. So this one, uh, of course, very Canadian, got five maple leaves on it. It says $20. Uh, it says fine silver. It also says argent peu, which, of course, is the French. Uh, the coin, this coin is bilingual. Like the regular circulating coins are not. They are on, they're only English. But the, uh, but the Canadian one, uh, the, these Canadian, commemorative, Canadian commemoratives generally are, are bilingual and have been for, for some years. Of course, the other side, uh, since it is coin of the realm, it, is, it has the portrait of the queen. So there you are, and that, and that was the first one. And I guess it did so well that uh, the Mint decided to um, continue with producing these coins. Now, this one was struck and was issued with a certificate of authenticity However, the after that though they they stopped doing that. They did not uh, they did not produce certificate of authenticity. So the next one that came out was this one here, a canoe and and its reflection on a very still lake. And uh, whoops, I have it upside down. <laughs> there we go. The canoe is going to the right. And we have the reflection in the in the still water. Again, twenty dollars, pure silver. Uh, the year twenty eleven, and of course, queen on the other side, but we can't see it because it's still in the container. So, again, it will have a portrait, same as this one. So that so that was the next one, and uh, this one also. They were they issued them at face value. You order you could order them from the mint. And you paid twenty dollars for them, exactly. No, no additional shipping or handling charges, which was great. So I think think that increased the enthusiasm for them. 
I believe there was a quarter million of these struck, 244,000 of them sold. So that's, that was the next one in 2011. Now, going into 2012, as they continued to make it, they, just, they were just made the decision they were going to strike about four each, four of them each year. So we'll just start off here. Well, <laughs> uh, the one on the top here actually is the one that they struck at near the end of the year. The, it has a Christmas theme on it with them. Um, now, doesn't look very, doesn't look too much like a reindeer, but I believe that is what it's supposed to be, a, car, a carib, what we call a caribou in Canada, or a reindeer in other parts of the world. And uh, so there you have it. That's the, that's the Christmas, uh, Christmas one from 2012. And also in 2012, another one with, another one with maple leaves. I'm going to guess that this one was, uh, was struck close to Canada Day. Oh, Canada Day, of course, is July the 1st, just in case anybody didn't know. So Canada Day, we celebrate uh, the founding of Canada. Uh, we didn't have to fight a revolutionary war like the, like the Americans did. It was a rather peaceful transition, thank goodness. But, uh, but it happened on July 1st. And there it is, tw again, $20, quarter ounce of pure silver. And it just uh, it just says on it, penny. Uh, now, it says penny on the back. Now, what that mean, what they're commemorating here, uh, even though I was saying it might have it was struck for Canada Day, but it appears that it's also commemorating the last of the Canadian one-cent coins, which people usually call pennies, though they're not pennies. The British coinage is pennies. The uh, penny was the penny was last struck in Canada in 2012, and this commemorated the last year of which uh, one Canadian one cent coins were struck. So that's what it, that's also what it was for. But as I say, maple leaves on it make nice Canada Day gift. On we go here to another to another one from 2012. In 2012, Queen Elizabeth celebrated. 60 years on the throne she's now up to 70 years and still going yeah so this one marks 60 years and we have our in this case we have what's called a reverse proof the raised part of the coin the queen's face is smooth and very shiny while the the flat background is um, frosted Usually for a proof, the raised part, like the queen's head, would be frosty and the background would have a mirror finish. So, so we call this a reverse proof. Um, interesting idea. I think the queen actually does look a bit better with a, uh, with a mirror face rather than the frosty look on her. So, so there we have it there. And it says on here, Diamond Jubilee. Yeah, Diamond Jubilee. That was... Uh, in 2012 or 2012 and uh, for the last one then for 2012 I have here this is a it's upside down is a, we have a polar bear swimming in in the uh, Arctic Ocean and uh, $20 very this one's a very very nice one uh, of, the, of the polar bear and uh, but funny enough, though, um, only 174,474 of these actually sold. I'm going to guess that there was 200,000 struck and the other 25,000 or so were melted down, which is a pity because I think this is the best, one of the best ones so far the, of the, with the polar bear picture. We, we like putting animals on our coins in Canada. And, and the polar bear is certainly uh, one of the popular animals, one of the, certainly a, a symbol of Canada in a way. And it, it's it's big, and um, it is actually the world's largest land carnivore. And uh, and while it certainly, if you ever see pictures of them, they certainly look cute. Trust me, they're not. If you live up in the northernmost part of Canada where polar bears frequent, if you go out on your own, you definitely want to have a rifle with you because a polar bear might see you and decide, oh boy, lunch. So yeah, cute, cute from a distance is all I can say about polar bears. But 
Anyway, nice coin. Again, sold for $20. On we go to 2013. We have... We have... Let's see. We got it. It's upside down again. All right. Let's get it right. Let's get it right side up. And in this case, we have an iceberg and we got a whale. Um, let's see. This... They... I'm not... Let me just... Trying to remember here, what kind of whale was that? It was um, uh, let's see. I'm not. Sure. I'm, I must admit, I'm not absolutely sure what whale is. Looks a bit like a humpback whale, and it's swimming around an iceberg. And that is again got twenty dollars. The turn the, uh, the the value there twenty dollars is sunk into the side of the iceberg, like it's been carved into it. And they, they just call it iceberg. It does not say what the whale is. So I'll take a guess that it's a humpback whale that we're looking at here. And so nice, anyway, nice coin, nice. And on we go. We got another Canadian animal. In this case, a wolf. Ah, yes, the big bad wolf. Well, again, as long as you stay, as long as you keep your distance from them, they're not they're not too bad in fact uh, wolves unlike polar bears wolves will stay around stay they'll stay away from people and not give people too much trouble but there we are there there's a there's our wolf and again it's a reverse proof you got a uh, got a smooth the uh, mirror background but it's not a mirror in this case it's uh, frosted the image of the wolf as well as the land the snowy landscape that he's walking on is um, has sort of a, has sort of a mirror finish it's not totally a mirror finish but pretty close to it yeah seems to be three different types of textures here you got the frosty sky you got a sort of a matte perhaps a matte landscape and then a mirrored image of the wolf so it seems like three different textures which is really really cool i, I at least i certainly think it is it's, it is a beauty and a quarter million of those ones were struck and of course being canada we we had to make one for hockey or ice hockey as some people call it but in canada we always play it on ice so we call it we always call just call it hockey if it's not played on ice we call it field hockey by the way so we got uh, mirror, the mirror finish on the hockey player in the background, and we got a frosted outer rim. So that's, again, I guess it's a hockey player. Looks like he's just uh, just done a slap shot. I'm not, sh I'm not sure if it's, if, it intends, if it's intended to be a particular hockey player, but when I see the stick way up like that, the first hockey player I think of is Bobby Hull, who had a very powerful shot. Uh, he had a very powerful slap shot. He would the puck would leave his stick at about 160 kilometers an hour. Yeah, he no doubt he scared the daylights out of out of a lot of goaltenders in his day. So there we are, hockey, hockey player firing a slap shot. On we go then. Of course, 2013 Christmas issue. There's here is our uh, de our deer again. Oh wait a minute. Nope, nope, sorry, what, what have I got here? No, I've got a, I've got a, uh, I've got another, i got this deer mix, mixed in here. This is a, this is another, this is another deer. Let me just check that. Ah, okay, nope, I think I might have, I think I might have goofed on something here. This is another 2012 deer. It's supposed to be a Santa one. I'm, I've got them, I've got them all mixed up here. I'll, I'll find it eventually. Let's move on though to number for, to 2014, and we have great Canadian tradition: summer, the summer cottage, running off, running and jumping off the end of the dock. And again, we got the we got the lake with a kind of a matte finish, the sky frosted, and the image of the of the diver in, in a mirror in a mirror mirror texture. So that's what that's supposed to represent, and that's from 2014. And on we go here to another Canadian uh, bobcat. A bobcat is a 
is in the family of big cats, though it's not that big. It's only somewhat larger than a than a domestic cat. And like many Canadian animals found in the wild, it's a very cute looking animal. And you almost think you could take it home and have it as a pet, but no, you can't. It's mean and vicious. And um, if they are if they are around, of course, uh, they will they will eat uh, farmers chicken and other and other livestock. They can be nasty, but uh, that's a bobcat. This is the second time that a bobcat's been used on a Canadian coin. Uh, 1967 25 cent piece also has a bobcat on it. I might uh, bring that up on a future uh, future video. So there we have it, bobcat. And on we go to another Canadian animal. We got a Canada goose flying through the air. Now these animals, when they're flying through the air, they definitely look majestic. Unfortunately, on the ground, they're mean and they are also mean and nasty. And while they're not that big and they don't have sharp teeth, they um, they definitely can be can be difficult animals and. And you don't want to get too close to them during the nesting season because, yeah, they can get real nasty. But Canada Goose is what that is. That's, fly, that's flying there on a frosty background. So, so again, very, very nice coin. And again, like, and uh, again, second time that a Canada Goose has been put on a Canadian coin back in 1967. Again, the $1 coin had a flying Canada Goose on it. Looked somewhat different from this one, but there you have it. Some nice, uh, nice Canada goose symbol. And then we finally finish up here for that for that year. This, ah, yes, this is the 1913 that I wanted to show earlier. It's the Santa Claus one, not the not the uh, reindeer. So again, makes a great Christmas gift, stocking stuffer, that type that type of thing. So that was the uh, the end of 2013 that that was struck there for for Christmas time so very nice very nice picture and on we go to 2014 and we start off now this one is a beauty this 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 is the uh, Canada has been uh, has been coloring some of its uh, some of its coins of uh, quite a lot of quite a lot of different commemoratives that it's that it's colored this one is is from 2015 and i believe this was made for canada day as a canada day gift and yeah very nice very nice um, portrayal of the canadian flag uh, the main was with the red maple leaf of course uh, the tree by the way is a sugar maple is where the, that's where the leaf comes from the tree the uh, tree that uh, makes the uh, maple syrup which goes great on which goes great on pancakes, or if you live up in some parts of Quebec, in Canada, they, they where they produce a lot of maple syrup. It supposedly goes good on just about everything, even mix even mix it in with your uh, as a sweetener for your coffee or tea. So that's the so that's the 2015 Canada Day special. Now the next one, this one commemorates. Superman. Superman, as you may not know, was actually was invented by a Canadian artist. And this uh, this particular coin commemorates commemorates that the uh, the the invention of the Superman comic. Uh, not sure what year Superman first first came out. There is a famous comic book that he came out where he's picking up a car, and that's marks here on twenty fifteen uh, Superman image so the superman image of course is copywritten by a different company so the mint would no doubt had to pay a little extra to for permission to use the superman symbol and a similar a similar coin again where they had to pay someone warner brothers in this case bugs bunny this is my favorite cartoon character bugs bunny don't see an awful lot of Bugs Bunny on TV anymore, but he was always my favorite favorite uh, animated character on TV. And he is coming right here. The 75th, this is 2015, 75th anniversary of Bugs Bunny. 
How was it? What was somebody who said seventy-five years and only one gray hair? Sorry, I know that was a bad pun. Probably a dad joke there somewhere, but seventy-five years of Bugs Bunny. Yeah, and there, there was 350,000 of these coins produced, according to the information here. It is, of course, a quarter ounce, 27 millimeters in diameter. And, um, and of course, the Mint had to pay Warner Brothers for the rights to use the Bugs Bunny symbol. Anyway, great coin. Bugs Bunny, my, my favorite. Nope, definitely not selling this one. So on we go to a few more from 2015. We commemorate in the next one here, uh, the Women's World Cup Soccer. Canada has, uh, has had a pretty decent women's soccer team. Their men's team leaves a fair bit to be desired. But hey, you know, the men in Canada are too busy playing hockey. They don't have time for soccer, right? But soccer, like in the United States, soccer has become quite popular for women in Canada so we have a have a pretty decent team and this commemorates uh, Canada's women's team playing in, tw in 2015 I don't remember how well Canada did I don't think we made it out of the first round unfortunately we, we just weren't that good that year but there it is uh, so it's a bit of a jumble there it is there's a whole bunch of details in the background but in the foreground, if you can see it clearly there, there is a young woman, long, long flowing hair running, and there's a soccer ball that she's just kicked or is about to kick. And that's uh, interesting. A lot of, lot of detail. A bit, uh, some would argue, argue maybe a little bit noisy because, it, because the woman kind of disappears into the background, but not a bad coin. On we go here to, uh, ah, yes. We got two Christmas ones from the from 2015. The first one, we got a gingerbread man with a candy cane, and that's uh, that was one that was struck for Christmas time. He looks like the gingerbread man is sliding down a snow-covered hill by the looks of it while holding a candy cane, and then finally we have another. Another Christmas one from twenty for also for twenty fifteen. We got a snowman, and he's throwing snowballs. If you can believe it, yeah. So that was the uh, so that's the other Christmas one. Oh wait a minute, Did I say I said twenty fifteen. No, this one's actually sorry. Christmas. This one's from Christmas twenty fourteen. I mixed them up. Sorry, twenty fourteen. The snowman throwing a snowball and again reverse proof snowman has a mirror finish the snowy background is frosted which actually works perfectly in this case if you're doing a, a frosted background is absolutely perfect for a winter setting because you can use the frosting to simulate falling snow as well as they have kind of done here they you know, you might see if you look if you can look closely enough there the texture of the frosting changes in a in a few spots there to give the look of uh, falling snow so well done job the uh, the the artists at the royal canadian mint i feel are immensely talented they've come up with some really really good stuff so that's on we go to another the final one this one i just thought as a just want to know as quickly this is a after all the success of the uh, 20, 20 for 20, they came out with, uh, in 2014, a $50 one. I, I paid $50 face value for this, exactly $50 for it. And uh, they, but the, seri the series did not last. I think they did the $50 one only once, and it's a polar bear hopping among the uh, ice sheets. Uh, they even did a $100 one for hundred dollar coin for a hundred dollars so you pay a hundred dollars for it and it has a hundred dollar face value i did not get one of those i just couldn't get myself to spend a hundred dollars for it and it too didn't last long i think they only did did two of the 100 for 100 coins and only one of the 50 for 50 so they didn't uh do as well as the 20. 
there are I, there are a few more twenty dollars or twenty for twenty coins out there that were struck in 2016. Unfortunately, I had left Canada for Japan by that time, so I don't have any of them. I may try to get my hands on them at some at some point, but I got uh, as I say got them all from um, 11 to the to 2015. Great coins and also good investment, quarter ounce bullion value, and uh, still not overly expensive. If you go to a coin dealer in Canada, uh, they would sell them for uh, as little as little as twenty five dollars in some cases. Uh, the first year one that I showed you at the very beginning, this one there's a bigger demand for it, so it's probably around thirty thirty five dollars if you want to buy it at your friendly neighborhood coin dealer. But uh, the others, though, generally, if you if you want them, they're twenty five bucks a piece. Um, now, of course, selling them, a dealer will give you only twenty dollars for them, the face the face value at this at this point in time, anyway. Um, as for the boolean value exceeding twenty dollars, uh, as you can if you as you can probably guess by doing the math quickly in your head, you'll realize that the Silver would have to reach a mind-bogglingly $80 per troy ounce, $80 Canadian that is, before the bullion value would exceed the face value of the coins. Do I see that happening? Hmm. <laughs> nope. I know crazy things are going on right now, but I just can't see it getting quite that high. So I wouldn't try to collect these with the idea that... Uh, that they're going to be going to become worth a lot much more than face value and for the bullion but they they are still bullion coins and if nothing else they're worth they're worth twenty dollars so still perhaps a good investment but uh, I get them because I like I liked them especially this one so I thank you very much everyone for watching and, and of course please don't forget to hit to uh, to hit the like and if you haven't subscribed yet and 80% of you who've watched have not subscribed please don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell so thank you very much